Welcome everyone to another episode of Elvis Tide Podcast. I actually did not say that at the beginning of this episode. I did pretty good. Although it was very awkward for me to start it with, hey guys. <laughs> it, was, it was good though. You did fine. You did fine. I appreciate that. Today's episode though, let me tell you, holy crap, what a game changer this one is. John, how was that? It was awesome. And for you guys out there and women who uh, buy supplements, this is probably the one you want to listen to, especially when you're trying to like optimize your health and and you want to feel better, and you want to have energy. Like I think he's hitting all of that right here. Yeah, today we have Dr. Neil Morris. He is a natural pathogen, right? Or yeah, naturopathic. Yeah, naturopathic doctor down in Arizona, and he is just incredible wealth of knowledge about everything. It was so good. I talked. We just got done talking to him after the interview, probably about five, ten more minutes, and I realized how messed up my body might actually be. <laughs> so John's going to give me his whole pathic <laughs> doctor's number, and I'm going to go get some blood work done, man, because this guy talks about some stuff where I, I didn't even know anything about. Well, obviously because he's a doctor, but I didn't even think about these signs of like low T, uh, ways to improve your recovery, uh, your mood, just like everything it was it was so good you i if you guys got to listen to this whole episode it's it's more of the medical side than it is the jujitsu side we do talk about a little bit more of the jujitsu but i really wanted to get him on to talk about his injection therapy and hormone um uh, what is it called hormone therapy basically yeah, hormone therapy and he really goes he dives deep into the first thing you should do before you go see or before you get like uh, stem cells or any kind of regenerative injections, you got to get your hormones in line. He always does blood work. And it was it was very, very inspiring to hear. And it makes me really want to go work with someone, you know, so I think I'm, I'm going to go do it because I need to sleep better. <laughs> yeah. And if you ever wondered what the cost of stem cell is, and we, we talk about it in this podcast. Yeah. And he even kind of alludes to his price. You know, it's. A lot of, unfortunately, a lot of stuff like this isn't covered under most insurance, but it's, to me, it makes, it's your health. It's an investment in your body for longevity. So, um, I definitely, we need to go down to Arizona. Let's go. We got, we got a lot of people down in Arizona that we're talking to that we need to go roll and get some injections. <laughs> I'll book it. I'll, so, book, I'll book it. Scottsdale. Here we come. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so guys, all of his stuff is going to be down in the description below. If you guys want to go follow him on Instagram, check out his, his brand new uh, office that he just opened up in, in Arizona. And it's, it's, it's a good one, man. I'm, I'm very, very excited for you guys to listen to this one. It's a game changer. So hopefully you guys enjoy. And uh, remember, send us a patch. We got a patch in the mail, I, I, I put it in our frame, uh, and then it fell once I put it in the frame, so you can't see it right now. But thank you guys. If you are sending us a patch, it, it's it's greatly appreciated. Um, it, was, it was cool opening a piece of mail and having a nice note from someone that listens to the show and their, their, uh, their appreciation for us. So send us a patch. I sent her a patch, and yeah, it was on, it's on our Instagram story if you guys want to see it. So, John, you got anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, guys. Enjoy. We'll talk to you later. Peace. What's up, guys? John and Travis here with a very special guest, Mr. Neil Morris. How are you doing today there, Neil? I'm doing great. How are you we guys are, doing? We are fantastic. Super excited about this interview. John watched a 30-minute video on Facebook of you uh, last night. Yeah, look, I already went and ordered a bunch of supplements, <laughs> so we got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we're super excited about this one. Uh, you're going to be our first doctor that we've had on, so I'm, I'm pumped. And, and your whole, like therapy that we'll get into like really intrigued me i saw it from matthew gillette on his instagram story and that's how i found you and i was like oh man i have terrible yeah. knees and i was like this is looks so like so intriguing to me so i was like i i, I want to talk to this guy especially because you know especially older athletes they're they're always talking about knees and joints and pains and stuff like that but we'll get into that and in, in, into the interview why don't we go ahead and uh go into your beverage of the day neil what you got for your beverage of the day I uh, coffee. Mm. Is that what kind of coffee is that? Is that coffee. a americano? Is that a? Uh, actually, it's. <laughs> I got this um, <laughs> when I was in medical school. I by the end of medical school, I was drinking ninety six ounces of blended black coffee with six shots of espresso. So wow, uh, and it's just like <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, gotta keep going. <laughs> um, 
but uh, but this is actually it's it's all black with two shots of espresso and then some sugar free uh, powder in there to keep the, the sugar low. So yeah, that's smart. what is that? That's a not not bulletproof coffee uh, shot in the dark, right? Is what it's called or whatever is when you have a drip and <sighs> then what? shots I, in it. I, I I, I probably should know, but I don't know the name. <laughs> How do you order? I just, I just give me like a big cup of coffee and then throw more coffee into it. I just need a lot I, of coffee. You know what? They actually they 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 made a button for me because I would come in and order it so much when <laughs> oh, I was in nice. medical school. Yeah, but they they actually called me uh, sugar free mocha Morris. Sugar free mocha what, Morris. The, sugar free mocha Morris is what they called me. So it was a blended mocha you know, mix with in all black coffee with two shots of it's crazy how popular coffee is up in the state of Washington. We're up in the state of Washington. Obviously Starbucks came from here, but you can, it's like a gas station and coffee stand is on every corner. It's not even like a Starbucks. It's like a little mom and pop coffee stand. But we, I mean, literally in our small town, we have like four or five Starbucks alone and I think countless small coffee stands. And so I wasn't a big coffee connoisseur when I first moved up here. I barely drank it, but just naturally being up here, you're like you drink a lot of yeah. coffee. Like, cause it's like, man, what do I want? It's like, oh, a coffee stand. I'll just go get a, a blended frap or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it, you can switch it up and yep. uh, there's definitely some that are better than others. So it's like, like oh yeah you burned your shots dude that's not very good <laughs> yeah but after you look at yeah <laughs> after you look at spending uh five bucks a coffee I every know. day for a month you're like you know some black regular coffee sounds great why you got to be a party pooper all right we're over here enjoying our fancy <laughs> <Yeah>. coffees <laughs> i was gonna tell them in boot camp we had something similar it was called a uh, ricky rocket and they would mix black coffee with hot chocolate the powder mix and chocolate milk and we'd yeah. slam that just to get through boot camp yeah, I drink those at work because we have Folgers, and Folgers is terrible. So I'm like, I got to add a bunch of something else into this thing. Is like, give it some real flavor. To make it yeah. taste good. <laughs> so, hey, but you know, that is your beverage of the day. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the interview. Can you give us uh, who you are, how you got into jiu-jitsu, and you know, just a general uh, who you are as a person? Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Neil Morris. I... Uh, I live in Arizona, and specifically the Phoenix area. I, I live in Gilbert. I practice out of Mesa which is all like right next to each other. Um, I am a naturopathic uh, doctor. And prior to becoming a naturopathic doctor, I actually worked as a nurse for several years too. So there was uh, kind of uh, two sides of the medicine that I look at, you know, whenever I approach anything when I'm working with somebody. Um, what were the other questions? Uh, how'd you get into jujitsu and, and how... So uh, I got into jujitsu. I started off uh, when I was young. My I was a single parent, single mom type thing with uh, an older brother, and my mom just started. I, I was the type when I was little, I would get in fights all the time. So my mom just started putting me in all different types of sports and stuff like that. So I was in karate, boxing, um, muay thai, uh, hapkido. Uh, what else? And then. Uh, and then I, I kind of stuck into like the Muay Thai and Hapkido. And whenever I, I was living in Florida, whenever I moved to Arizona, I was kind of like, you know what really sucks? My ground game. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I went into uh, jujitsu being you know pretty good in some of the other martial arts and got owned. And I was like, all right, this is what I need to do, you know? Because up until that point, I was primarily striking, and and I I literally all that striking was awesome. But once I was on the ground and on my back, or you know, or them on their back, I was just getting demolished. So that's what really drew me into uh, jujitsu. Is the fact like, wow, it's a whole different world. Did you ever think about practicing not not competing in MMA, but kind of looking at more of an MMA style since you do have striking, and then they they do throw in the grappling in there. You know, I did. Um, and I, and I did play around with it actually before I got big into jujitsu, uh, I did play around with it, but, uh, I'm older now and I don't want to get hit in the face. So, <laughs> you know, and that's another thing that I love about jujitsu. I mean, yeah, you know, you get the incident, incidental elbow or knee or something like that, but you know, no, someone's not like sitting there trying to just strike you right in your jaw or nose or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I did think about it. Uh, I am around a lot of guys that do it. Uh, but at the same time now, I'm just kind of like, you know what? I'm older. I don't want to get hit in the face. I'm good. <laughs> so, so what rank are you? I saw you're a blue belt, right? 
I'm a blue belt. I got three stripes. So, how do how do you like uh, being a blue belt? Did you go through your blue belt blues yet? <laughs> you want to know what? So, I mean, if we get into it right now. I actually started jujitsu about a year before I started medical school. Oh wow! Yeah, so I've I've been doing it for a while, and I got my blue belt. So, just to give you an idea of the blue belt blues, <laughs> I got my blue belt about three months into medical school. So I'm because I was going like five, six times a day, a week, you know, type of thing. Like I was like diehard, go, 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 go. That's how we were. And then I got into medical school and my time went (laughs) to be able to actually go, you know, like five, six days a week. So then I was just like, you know, if I got three classes a week, I was like super stoked while I was in medical school. And then I had uh, my first knee injury was in a tournament it was i was in medical school and i uh had a, a flipped bucket handle tear of my my right knee so my leg was locked out so i had to have surgery mm. to clip it because my leg wouldn't move um so that kind of pushed me back a little bit and then um and then i i i was one of those guys that was like 2020 is my year <laughs> 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 you know what i mean and i uh, 2020 of course you know covid happened so that made it more difficult. And that's also actually when I hurt my left knee, I got caught in a single leg and uh, the guy snapped my ACL. Oh, was that just diving so, in or? Uh, you know what? He actually, he, he was like in a, oh, I can't remember if he was like in an X guard or something. He was underneath me and he, he was a brown belt. You know what I mean? And he, you know, just, he's just better technically. He came up, brought into a single leg. I tried to fight it and he, he was a strong guy too more technical and stronger and he just and it popped and we both looked at each other Uh. (laughs) and uh we were both kind of like i'm like it's okay it's okay i'm sure it's okay and he's like well my coach was like you know what just sit down for a little bit and then i was thinking about doing the next round and my coach was like nah why don't you just sit and then when i went into the locker room like taking off my my gi pants and i shifted weight over to that left knee and i felt it buckle and i was like oh this this is really bad. But yeah, I had a greater than 85% tear on my ACL. Um, oh, man. Mid-2020. So, But I didn't have surgery. I actually did injection therapy. I did injection therapy. And in three months, I was back in class. So, that's so yeah, I saw that you do this in injection therapy stuff. And like, can you go into like a little bit further detail of like what it is? Is yeah, it what like, is it? Is, How does it work? Yeah, you know, is it we're kind of like what, what Joe Rogan talks about the stem cells? Is it like that? Yep. Or it's a it, lot like that. Okay, so it's all the, the 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 key around the injection therapy that I do, and there's other people that do it too, is making your body heal itself. So the big difference between like cortisone injections, because I can give cortisone injections, but cortisone injections just make the pain go away. It doesn't heal it at all. So doing these injections and in, in the, the different levels, they think of like prolotherapy, PRP, which is platelet rich plasma. And then you're stepping it up to like stem cell, stem cell products. And specifically they call it's MSCs, which is mesochymal stem cells, which is a, I usually don't say that to most people because at that point they're like, words, words, words type of thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like from an FDA point of view, if you don't say mesochymal stem cells, then, you know, you, they could actually potentially go after you, which is silly, but, um, but yeah, so basically these different therapies, you, you're going into the same areas that you would do like cortisone, but you go very specific to where the tear or the injury is, and you're injecting this in the prolo is comes from proliferative in other words it's got a little bit of dextrose in it like sugar and it aggravates the area and it makes your body think there's an injury there so it sends your healing uh of your own body to the area and then prp which is when i draw blood from a patient and then i spin it down and i pull out their prp that is your healing response and you put it right into the area where the injury is um, another thing that I do with it is I put ozone in with it. Ozone is O3. You have to have medical grade oxygen. You have to have an ozone condenser. And that puts a ton of oxygen in the area. Cause I don't know if you guys ever seen like a scope of a knee, you know, where they have the little circle pictures Yep. and you ever notice like there's no blood in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not very vascular. And once you have an injury to something and scar tissues laid down, there's not really great blood flow. So healing doesn't, you know, once the scar tissue is laid down, the healing's done. 
it's going to get as good as it's going to get. That's why I'll tell a lot of people, I'm like, if you're still having pain after four weeks, come see me, you know, even the younger athletes who are like, you know, oh, I, it's all right. And you're like, dude, it's not all right. You dislocated your shoulder. <laughs> you know, it's like, like, no, I'm good now. I'm good. And I'm like, mm, that's going to bite you later. You need to do something about it. But, you know, but after, yeah. You're about to say something like, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well go, any, after you finish, we'll, we'll tell you about his shoulders. Yeah. Well, I, you know what I mean? It's like the things that we do in our 20s, we bounce back relatively well, at least we think. And then in our 40s, we're like, wow, that didn't, I remember when I heard that 20 years ago type of thing. But yeah. And then again, stem cell products there uh, in stem cell is uh, another step up, which is a little bit stronger than PRP. PRP is a little bit stronger than Prolo. Uh, I shouldn't say stem cells a little bit stronger than PRP. It's a lot stronger than PRP because uh, it basically can it help. Not only does it can it turn into what it's there, um, but it can help recruit all the other stuff in your body to pull there. It actually will take your own body stem cell and make it come there too. So, how does that work? Uh, is that as cost effective as surgery, or is it is it more? Or is it less? And is that so, something typically insurance covers? So insurance will not cover stem cell. They will cover some of the injection therapy. And uh, generally what we do with people is if they have out of network benefits is we can apply that to their out of network benefits for like the PRP, the injection, the anesthesia and stuff like that. The ultrasound, cause I, I always use uh, ultrasound guidance. Um, it will contribute to it, but what it won't, the stem cell, which is the most expensive part of it. Mm. Uh, but that being said, if you have your ACL repaired, you're looking to be in down for nine months. I didn't have my ACL repair. I was down for three months. That's crazy. So how much is six months worth to you? That's what I tell, you know, when I tell people. And then I also like, you know, without giving out any names, because I won't do that about any patient, but I had a patient who actually was talking about how they dropped 60K for their, uh, a new kitchen in their house. At, and then when I tell them the price of stem cell, they balked at it. And I'm like, dude, we're not even talking a, you know, we're, we're roughly talking a 10th of the price. <laughs> right. And, and I'm like, you're going to sell your house probably in five years. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, your body, this is your body, man. Yeah. You know? So it's like, yeah, I know it's expensive, but at the same time, when you think it's your body, I think it's worth the investment. So to mention the stem cell stuff. Uh, Joe Rogan talks a lot about it, how he has to go down to Panama or whatever to, to get... Um, yeah, it's this, the Neil Riordan, Riordan Center. Yeah, and it, where he gets his stem cells. How come it's not more popular in yeah. America and how come we don't normalize it to because it does have such benefits? There, there's a there's a uh, federal... <laughs> <laughs> there's a federal organization called the FDA. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dumb like, question, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that makes it more challenging to do stuff. In fact, June 2020, or no, I'm sorry, 2021, this past year, uh, the FDA changed the rules again because we used to be able to harvest stem cell from you. We could take your stem cell and then re-inject it in the area. But one of the new rules is, or terminology is if it's more than minimally manipulated, you can't do it. And the enzyme that they use whenever you pull the uh, the stem cell out of you uh, is more than minimally manipulated. So basically, it just took it off the market. So um, primarily what I use right now is uh, Wharton's jelly, which is the substance that's inside the cord, the umbilical cord from live cesarean births. And the good thing that happened about the change with the FDA in, in 2021 in June was that really it took, everybody had to be registered with the FDA. And it took mm. all the people who were questionable in their products mm. off the table because you have to be registered with the FDA. Now there's different levels of being registered, but you had to be at some level level registered with the FDA. The bad thing is costs went up. Like literally the, the pro, overnight, if I would have known the day before, I probably would have ordered as much product as I could you know what I mean? Because literally the price doubled overnight and you're just like, Ugh. because supply and demand, right? Right. You know what I mean? Like literally like, I don't know, 80% of the companies like went out of business. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, but it is what it is. Um, 
when I know people who are like, they want, I, I've actually treated some people who have gone to Panama and you're looking at 10 ish thousand dollars for the therapy, not flying down there, oh, not okay. staying and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm cheaper than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not 10, <laughs> I'm not 10 grand and, um, and I still get results. It's, and I think it's kind of how we do, we do a little bit different than most people in the sense of, uh, a lot of people, like they come in and they do a one and done of stem cell when they do stem cell, but we do a whole protocol where we utilize supplements, balancing your hormone, you know what I mean? Kind of like some of the stuff we were kind of talking about before we started recording a little bit about like hormone supplementation and all that kind of stuff. Because when you have the body set up to heal, you you know, it, it makes me look awesome. Right. <laughs> you, know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, but really, you know, because there's a lot of things that go on with, uh, like I, I had a, a diabetic patient that came to me who wanted stem cell. And I said, we got to get your diabetes under control first. And they didn't want to. And they're like, I have the money. I don't care. Da, da, da. And I was like, it's not going to work. Because, you know, the diabetes, part of the reason why like they get, you know, like sores on their feet and stuff like that is because they don't, they don't heal well. So they get a little nick on their feet and then they don't heal well. So why are you going to spend, you know, thousands of dollars on stem cell and then turn around it's not going to work right so I, I actually refused him and he went somewhere else and he got it done and guess what it didn't work so imagine that it's like you're a doctor yeah. just saying you know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah exactly like what was that medical school for right <laughs> this is okay you just go on google you can find it on google it's yeah, all right okay. <laughs> yeah. webmd says <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, on WebMD, you can always die too at the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, it could be, it could be hiccups. It could be this, it could be this, or you could die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're like, right. all right. I don't go so, there unless I want to be stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, cause it's going to tell you like worst case scenario. Yeah. It's like, oh, you have brain cancer. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, I stubbed my toe. I don't understand the correlation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you mentioned so. that you, uh, they, they, the, they took away stem cells of minor manipulation of one's own stem cells. Can you explain that? So how do you get stem cells? Is it the blood, like the blood withdrawal, and then you spin it down and you grab stem cells from there? Or is it like an umbilical, you go through their belly button? Or like, how do you get stem cells? How do we do it cells? now or how did we do it? How did you do it? And then, yeah, both. So uh, how we did do it is you actually, you, you would either get it from the bone marrow. So you would go into the bone and you would aspirate. Um, it's kind of uncomfortable because it causes a vacuum inside your bone, but it doesn't mm. last very long. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and mm. then the other way is adipose. Um, bone marrow is better with people who are younger. Bone marrow initially is better quality stem cell, but it decreases as we age. Whereas adipose um, is not as good initially as bone marrow, but it doesn't really change much throughout our years. So um, depending on their age, I would decide one or the other, or sometimes do both. Uh, adipose, it basically looks like uh, uh, doing liposuction on mm -hmm. a patient. You know, like when you see people and they're like, Whoa. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very similar to that because you're basically taking the fat out. So you, you usually do it somewhere in the back or in the abdomen. I usually would do it in the back because in the abdomen, they could actually look and see it. And it can freak them out. Uh, you know what I mean? Like if you see me sitting there doing that, you're like, well, that looks brutal. So they're not um, under for this or you do a no, local no, anesthesia? No, I do local. Okay. I do local anesthesia. So they don't feel what I'm doing per se, other than you feel kind of like pressure and movement. But, you know, sometimes when you look at it, you're kind of right. like, holy here. crap, that's in my <laughs> yeah, body. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, because also think about the, the, the catheter that I'm using for the, the extraction is like, a little bit smaller than a pencil too. So like when you see that, you're kind of like, oh, I think I'm going to get lightheaded. <laughs> <You're talking laughs> <about that. laughs> so um, we now we don't do that anymore because, you know, basically FDA kind of took that off the table for us. Also, one of the things that I found, like I had, <laughs> so this one guy, he had, uh, I forget exactly what he had going on as soldier, but he had, it was pretty messed up. And we, we did a harvest on him and I injected his shoulder and, you know, I tell people, you know, take as much time, downtime as possible. But, you know, anyone who does jujitsu, they're like, yeah, so like, what, a day? You know, right. I'm like, Preach. Eh, more than that. But he was actually, <laughs> he was actually in class. And I think it was about two weeks after we injected his shoulder. And 
He's like, you know what? My shoulder feels great. The only thing that hurts is like in my back area back here. And it was actually the, the harvest site <laughs> was what hurt him. But he, he was, I was like, well, tell me what happened. Like when did it start hurting? He goes, well, you know, so-and-so had me on knee on belly. And like I turned to my side and then his knee ran down the back side of where we harvest it. And whenever you harvest it, you're basically, you're almost like separating the fascia, like the tissue in mm -hmm. that area. So literally it, it was trying to heal. And then someone's knee just went, you know what I mean? And I was like, and I explained it to him and he goes, oh, well, that makes sense. And I'm like, yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> so, but I get it, you know, being do, being somebody who practiced jujitsu all the time. Like I, I literally, uh, I, I do touch up on my shoulders and my knees just because, you know, we choose what we do. And I literally had my shoulder injected and I took off that day, but the next day I was in class and my wife was, I was kind of like, oh, my shoulder's kind of a little bit. She's like, didn't you just inject it? And I'm like, Yeah. And she's like, what do you tell your patients? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, all right, fine. You know, so I get it when, you know, you, you don't want to miss class. You don't want to miss any roles or anything. I get it. Um, but obviously the, the recovery time is important. So what I found though, is that when now we use more, we, we mix the ozone with your PRP and then with like the uh, Wharton's jelly product we're actually getting similar results and, and I don't have that harvest site to worry about. Hmm. So it's just a blood draw, risk. right? So, right. Yeah. It's a blood draw. So there's less risk of infection. I don't have to worry about like what this guy did, you know, with his back. Um, <clears throat> whenever you harvest, whenever you harvest from the bone, you know, that's a direct communication to the bone that, you know, you don't want someone sweating into or, you know, getting into right. a hot tub or anything like that. Because if you get an infection in your bone, it can, it can go bad really quick. Like you could lose that bone type of thing. So it eliminates a lot, makes it less riskier for the patient. So that's why we were kind of like, you know what? That's fine. As long as we're getting the same results, I'm okay with it. So, yeah, John, you, John just had uh shoulder surgery right you yeah, want to explain I've that had, a little bit well that's what i was just thinking about i've, I've had both shoulders done i've had a uh, bony bank carts done on both of them and some like limit yeah. ligament repairs things like that and i'm thinking man i had the surgery done the last time i've been to jiu-jitsu was november 1st for the record so it feels like forever yeah and you know i'm still in physical therapy and i'm like man, can i go back to class yet and they're like no no <laughs> so i'm thinking i was like is it smarter like it wasn't even an option because i didn't know about it then right like should you go in and should you, I mean, if I'd have went in, is it going to repair stuff like a bank heart? And people that don't know, that's like some bone so, that's missing and ligaments. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a break. It's literally, yeah. a, it's a type of fracture. Um, it depends on the level of it. So generally I recommend most people, uh, because the research does not show now. I, I, the research didn't show that it would help my knee by the way, either. Like literally I should have had surgery on my knee. I broke all the rules type of thing. So research does not show that the injection therapy would help that particular type of fracture. What I would generally tell people is like, you know what, have the surgery, but then about four weeks after the surgery, I would do PRP to it. I would start being really aggressive with it, with the injection therapy and heal it faster because exactly what you're thinking, like, um, Dude, a week not on the mats feels like a month. Right. So I can imagine where you're at right now. Mentally, you're thinking like, <laughs> I don't remember anything. Right? Right, you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, like, for I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure I'm a white belt. I'm turning, <laughs> I'm turning in this belt when I get back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give this exactly. back to me in a month yeah. or two. I, I, they... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I, I get it. Um, but yeah, that's why even when I have people who do do surgery and their surgeon will be like, nah, that stuff doesn't work. And I'm like, Look at my MRI. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I have the before and after MRIs. Most people won't get an after MRI. Um, but I wanted to know because I'm like three months out and I'm like, I'm feeling good. But is it, in, you know, is this just in my head? So I did a follow up MRI that showed that roughly 80% of my ACL reattached. That's so crazy. That's nuts. So what yeah. do you say to people that, because I'm sure there's people out there, especially other doctors in the medical field that say, oh, don't do that. Like, that's not real. That's not going to work. You're wasting your money, your time. Like, 
Like, how do you convince people that, you know, their their primary doctor is like, oh, that's not going to work. How do you convince them? Like, trust me, like, this is going to work. Like, I you have like a portfolio? I show them r- results. Yeah, I, I show them results. Because here's the thing. I can't guarantee results. I mean, I have really good, uh, what's, what is it called? Like, I would say like 99.0% of my patients are, are going to do amazing, you know? And so I feel very comfortable and, and I'll tell some people, like I had this one older lady, she was 70 plus, had multiple spine surgeries and she wanted to do stem cell. And I was like, I don't know if you want to spend that kind of money because I said, I really give you a 50, 50 shot, whether it's going to help you or not. So I'm very brutally honest with people like this may not do any, anything. And it actually worked beautiful on her. I was, I was impressed. I was like, holy crap, it worked. <laughs> you know I mean? of thing. <laughs> Just because, you know, she was, she was older. She had multiple surgeries to her back. And, and, you know, it's like there's, there was no research to support that it would help. So, you know, I just want, I, I like to be honest with people. Um, so, I mean, it really depends on where you start with how much benefit I, I think that you'll get from it. So what are the limitations on on this hormone injection? Like, is there a certain area that you shouldn't do it in? Or uh, like, is, like you mentioned, like she's had multiple surgery on her back. You were kind of hesitant to do it. Like, what are the limitations that you're upfront with your clients? Like, this might not help. Well, number one, I, I, I do, I look at the patient, okay? So does it, do they look like they have diabetes? Does it look like their cortisol is off? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, to, to, we're not injecting natural hormones, but, um, but if their hormones are off, balancing their hormones first will help them heal better. Like I tell people, like what a lot of people don't realize is testosterone is a natural anti-inflammatory. So getting your testosterone and, and it helps heal tissue. So actually getting your testosterone at an optimal level for you, not for an 18 year old, not for a, you know, an 80 year old, everybody has their own level. Getting your hormones balanced will make you heal better. And then once we get that optimized, you know, make sure your blood sugar is not too high. You know, the whole diabetes things, make sure your cortisol is not too high. That's inflammation. You know, at that point, that's whenever you become a better candidate. Now, like for my, when I was talking about my first knee, I had a flipped bucket handle tear. So that's pretty much, I had a wedge stuck in my knee. And if I would have injected it, I would have healed it that way <laughs> with uh, a locked yeah. out knee. So that knee was not a candidate. Once they clipped it and got the, basically the wedge out, now I become a candidate to be able to heal faster and less likely to re-injure the area. So it, it, I do very personalized medicine. And I think, um, that's one of the things that's missing a lot in medicine today is, you know, most doctors, are paid on how many patients they see. I'm, I'm gonna talk to him about it when he's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not they're not paid off of results. They're paid off of how many patients they see. So that's you know the the model that I go through is I I get paid off of results, not off of how many patients I see. Yeah, that's a good point, and I was gonna talk about it. Is I have two physicians. One is uh, my normal primary, and then I have a, a naturopathic in Gig Harbor that I go see. And it was interesting because I had never done that before, but I had a stroke a couple years ago. And when I was in the hospital, they put me on uh, blood thinners and like some cholesterol medicine, like right away. And I was pretty fit. I mean, like 175 jujitsu all the time, some CrossFit. So I was like, why are they putting me on this stuff? I don't want to be on it. But it was like right away they put me on it. And uh, I remember when I was laying in the hospital bed because they had to go in and like put a plug in the heart. The nurse was like, hey, you should get off of this stuff as fast as you can. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Yeah. So, so I reached out to a different kind of doctor that I wasn't used to in Gig Harbor. And I went in, and the first thing that threw me off is it was like an hour and a half, me sit down mm-hmm. with the doctor. And she was yeah. trying to get to, like, the root cause of everything. She did a full blood workup, the whole thing. And she was like, yeah, you don't need to be on these cholesterol meds. So she, she took me off of them right away. And uh, I've never been back on them. But I refer people to her. Because it was a totally different experience. I'm not used to someone treating the symptom and not trying to find the cause. So it, it was different. And I highly encourage people to do that. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, and I think it's becoming more and more no, normal for people to start to seek out uh, a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor. Um, 
because general medicine is exactly what you said. You, you got put into the cookie cutter machine. You have a stroke, you go on these medications. Yep. Not what caused the stroke, right? Correct. Now there's always a time and place for every type of medicine, but um, the long-term use of those medications are usually not needed. You know, if you eliminate the cost. So what? like for you, um, <clears throat> do you know what kind of stroke it was? It was a birth defect. You know, that flap that's supposed oh. to close in the heart. So yeah. I had ended up having like a heart aneurysm part of that that had a blood clot in it. And the clot burst and went through that flap that should have been closed. Okay. Yeah. But I stayed on those so. blood thinners for and the cholesterol reducer for probably about two months before I got off of them. During that two months, no energy, totally weak. And covered in bruises. <laughs> Don't recommend them because so, I was still doing jujitsu. Like, so here's the thing. I'm gonna give out a. Hopefully, everyone still stayed in tune. Whoever's watching, <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give out a huge tip. There is a website called My Tavin. I believe it's M Y T A V I N dot com. And what it does is you can put on the put in the medications. I'm not. I'm not making any money off of that or anything like that. Right. Uh, uh, you can put in the medications you're on. And it will show you the vitamin deficiencies that it causes. Wow. Yeah. It's free. It's just a website. You could, you know, I, I, I use it with my patients, but you want to know what all those statin drugs, the lower cholesterol do, they, do you want to know what the number one side effect? I, I it's not a side effect. It's cause <laughs> uh, fatigue. It actually, uh, it interferes with a, a enzyme HMO co-reductase which uh, I know it's like, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> Taking notes, look it up later. <laughs> but basically it, it, it stops CoQ10 being utilized and CoQ10 is needed to produce energy. So that's why anytime I see someone on a statin drug, a, a cholesterol drug, cholesterol lowering drug, I put them on CoQ until we can get them off of it. So because their body becomes deficient in it. John, you mentioned something about that video. Yeah, was, I, I, I looked you up and I found one of your uh, videos from 2019. I'm not sure where you were at, but basically it looked like you were giving a 30 minute speech at a at a class or some kind of function. And uh, um, you talked maybe about maybe at a gym. What you was talk, I talking about? <laughs> uh, you, you talked about hormones. You talked about uh, HPTE. I think was one of the supplements you mentioned. Uh, you talked about uh, the statin drugs, and a lot of it was on. So I'll just give some of the words were like, hey, if you drink a, a 65 ounce coffee in the morning and then you're tired between 2 and 5 p.m., it's probably a, a cortis what is it? Not cortisol. Cortisol. Cortisol yeah. function, things like that. I think the whole premise was why are you tired was what your whole right. thing was about. And I was thinking, yep. is he talking to me right now? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like taking notes. I watched the whole thing. I thought it was great. Uh, and then I went on like Amazon. I'm like, all right, I need this supplement. I'm going to get this supplement. <laughs> like, where's this HPTE? I can't find that yet. But I got some other stuff. But it, it was really good. And it just talked about uh, basically your hormone level. And as you get older, I'm 44. So, you know, I'm normally exhausted by the time I get to jujitsu class at 6 p.m. Because we get Rolling to work. with 20-year-olds. Yep. Yeah. And I, and I get to work at 5 a.m. And I'm, I'm utterly exhausted. I can't figure out why because I'm in pretty good shape. So I was like, well, maybe it's this low T or whatever they're talking about. Like, maybe I need to figure that out. So there's this cool thing. Um, the name of it is called pregnenolone steel. And then go to images and there, look at the most basic image there. But basically, cortisol is uh, part of your fight or flight. So when a tiger comes in the room, you have to fight it or you have to run. That's part of cortisol. So it always wins. It, that and epinephrine, that's your fight and flight. Cortisol makes your body release sugar to give you, be able to give you energy to fight or run. Um, the interesting thing, though, is whenever you're constantly firing cortisol, it's the stress hormone. Think of it as the stress hormone. Also, it's the hormone that wakes you up in the morning um, or not if it's not working right. <laughs> um, is it steals from testosterone? So if you're constantly – and I see it in actually athletes that overtrain. You know, like they're like – you know, like I train jits three times a day, six days a week. And I'm like, but I'm completely, you know, like I can't put on muscle or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Cause literally, and they look super fit. Like you look at them and you're like, dude, you look great. You know, but their testosterone, it's like a 30 year old guy and his testosterone is like 400, you know, and, and their cortisol is just 
totally stealing everything. So you balance the cortisol and then, you know, optimize the testosterone and boom, their testosterone comes up and they start recovering better. They start, you know, putting on muscle mass or, you know, some people, you know, want to lean down. They Also cortisol, ele elevated cortisol levels. Uh, uh, one of the telltale signs is yes, that between one to five that I got to take a nap or hit the caffeine, <laughs> yeah. but also uh, helps you put on belly fat. So if you're like, if your problem area is like around the waist and you're having those other <laughs> symptoms, well, we're it's, like it's coffee. probably cortisol. That sounds exactly yeah, like me right say, now. We're coffee and energy drinks. Like we can have coffee in the morning, I but am, then afternoon it's like energy drink time. I can literally yeah. fucking drink <laughs> a thousand milligrams of caffeine and take a nap. Like not even joking. Like, and I also have I ADHD. I used to be that way. I, I yeah. also do have ADHD. So people will tell me, oh, it's probably because you have ADHD, so it calms you down or whatever. And I'm like, I was like, oh, so that's probably it. But now listening to you, I'm like, man, my body's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna get our flight down to Mesa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I am fucking up since something right now. I'm about to get some blood work. I, I don't even have a doctor. You get me? I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm like internally thinking, like, holy, sh I'm a piece of shit right now, man. Like, I'm like, I am fitting everything Dr. Neil Morris is talking about right now. <laughs> well, you, you want to know something that's super crazy is I've literally taken people's testosterone from like 400 to 900 and not even put them on testosterone that's what i was gonna say what's a good number like what is a good is number that relative to age or? when you say 400 i'm like i don't know if that's good or not yeah, I don't know if yeah. so the, the range is roughly the range is really really wide with testosterone like they made it up like in the 1950s where they took like 80 year old men who were hospitalized and like college students that needed beer money type of thing and they came up they came up the range it's roughly 250 to a thousand Wow. So weird. like, yeah, when you're 18, you know, you're supposed to be like, bing, 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 bing. And when you're, you know, 85 and on your deathbed, yeah, your testosterone should be, you know, around like 300 is kind of what they came up with. Um, so when you see someone who is not older in decent shape and their testosterone is like less than 600 and they're, you know, there's always, usually there's like a libido, like a sex drive diminishes and stuff like that. But the thing about guys' hormones is we change really slow. So like it's gradual over time. So it's like cooking a frog. You boil it nice and slow and you don't realize it until all of a sudden you're like, man, I don't wake up with morning erections anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Type of yeah. thing. And, and, and that actually is a telltale sign. If you're not getting morning erections, then your testosterone is probably off. That's what you kind of, like. That was something I was going to say earlier, but like, it's and when you are getting morning erections, then your testosterone is actually probably you know optimal. But uh, a number is a number is a number. In other words, your number, your specific number, may be six hundred. Your specific number might be eleven hundred. You know what I mean? So like, um, which people are like, whoa, that's above normal. It's like, it's. It is what it is. I mean, that scale was made up and it's obsolete really now. We need to redo the numbers. Um, but it's it's really, I base it off of how you feel. And you walk in, you said, you're like, hey, Dr. Morris, man, I feel amazing. I'm like, all right, let's draw labs. Let's see what your number is. And then it comes in and it's 750. I'm like, all right, that's, you know, if you feel amazing and you're doing all the stuff you want to do and you have the energy that you want and the sex that you want and all that kind of stuff, then that's your number. So I don't get caught up in the number per se as much as like how you feel. Because again, the number is very, uh, your number's this, this is the medication you get, you know what I mean? <laughs> type of thing. Right. So what, when I was watching your video, you talked about um, lotions, pellets, and something else for the injections. testosterone. And, yeah. And it was funny because when you said it, I was thinking about my uh, father-in-law and he goes in, he's in the middle of nowhere, by the way, Battle Mountain, Nevada. You guys probably never heard of it. But he gets the injection, the pill or whatever it is where they inject him. The and, pellet, yeah. Yeah, and I watched your video and you're like, eh, it's only good for like three or four days and then it's gone. So No, no, no. The, the, the pellet weeks? No, the pellet will last usually roughly three months, the pellet. Well, what I was going to say is I noticed he started getting that and right. then he started gaining weight like crazy. So he was like, probably converting to estrogen. Yeah, well, that's what I learned from that video. So I sent him the video. I was like, you might want to watch this. Like, he's like, I don't know where I'm getting all this weight from. And I was like, well, I think I figured it out now. But it, yeah. it was very interesting. Well, something you have to keep in mind also, you know, I know we're talking more about uh, hormones now, is if your body is low on testosterone and then you all of a sudden give it, your body will, you know, 
it thinks that wherever you're at is normal. So then I set, suddenly give you extra testosterone and then your body's like, whoa, man, this is too much. Even though it's still in the normal range and it's like, all right, well, let's convert it over to estrogen or convert it to DHT or let's increase sex hormone binding globulin and bind it up because this is way too much. So sometimes you have to, you either have to address those things right out of the gate or you have to titrate people up uh, whenever you're doing testosterone per se. Can you titrate? What does that mean? Is that like incrementally <coughs> increase the levels of testosterone right. supplemented? Right. You would start lower and then, you know, because you just, to me, the number one thing is most people just want to feel better, right? So you get them feeling better, but not necessarily optimal. Um, and then around the three month mark, then that's whenever I want to see them start to be more optimal. But like, yeah, I don't want them to feel awesome in one week necessarily. If they feel awesome in one week, I can guarantee that your body's going to try to shift it to estrogen, to DHT, you know, or increase sex hormone binding glycogen. It's it's going to happen. Now, some people are like, and and I I really do my best to you know you know working with a naturopath, we really do our best to like listen to what you mm -hmm. want, and I'm going to cater it to what you want, and then I'm going to tell you like, but this is what can go wrong. You know what I mean? Like what well, I was talking about the difference between, you know, the pellets, the injectables, the creams, and then there's also different things you can do that stimulate the, the pituitary to stimulate the testes to produce more testosterone too. So, um, and then I, I like, this is the options that are out there for you. How fast do you want the results? And this is the side effects of going this way, this way, or this way. And then you choose, and then we go that way. I had a buddy who was trying to get his labs done because he felt he looked up the symptoms of low T and he's maybe two years older than I am. And he was looking up the symptoms of low T and he's like, bro, I'm checking every box of this low T right now. And he went to his primary care and uh, they're like, no, you don't need labs. You're young. He's like, no, I'm like, I'm literally telling you like every one of these boxes I'm checking right now, like, like uh, low sex drive, like this and that. He's like, I, I can you just do my labs to look at what my my t levels are and they they finally it took him a while to convince his primary care to do it but they did it and they're like yeah you have low t he's like why what was the <laughs> point of like you fighting me on it you know because I mean? they didn't because he didn't fit in that box the right. same thing with you whenever it came with your stroke this is the box you fit in this is what we do and and, and that's exactly what is the challenge in most medicine out there is if you don't fit in the box then no it's not that like one of the Here's a silly criteria that makes sense to someone who doesn't do anything that's hard on the body. So one of the criteria for osteoarthritis is you have to be 40 or older. Wow. Now, if, if, if uh, you do jujitsu and you started when you were 10 years old and now you're 30, it's like, and you're starting to have, you know, knee pain or shoulder pain or something like that. They're like, oh, no, it can't be osteoarthritis. It has to be something else. It's like, well, you know what? <laughs> Knowing what the sport of jujitsu or MMA or just, you know, you know, things that are hard on your body. I even have a couple of people who like uh, are like professional dirt bike riders and stuff like that. You know, those guys are like brutal. Like they've broken every bone in their body, <laughs> at least once type of thing. Um, but uh you know, you, you have to know that the rules were just kind of guidelines and not uh, intended. And even another thing, like the standard of care is total testosterone. Um, but free testosterone is actually tells you how much available testosterone you have. So I've actually had a, a person who had a total testosterone of 900, which is a great number, but their free testosterone was five. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if he would have went into a standard primary care physician and they would have said, hey, check my testosterone, they would have checked his testosterone, they would have been like, your testosterone's fine. See, we told you, you know? So that's why I always look at free. It's not considered industry standard, but free is what you have available. And that's when I was talking about sex hormone binding globulin. It will bind to testosterone and actually make it inactive. Mm, so... Okay. Man, I'm like learning so Bro, much. I'm right like, now. I'm if like, I was him, I'd be like, you, since you know so much, I'd be like, man, if I went to class and I had a great role, which I've had occasionally, I'd be like, that's it. I'm going to the lab. I need the blood drawn right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need this peak performance all the time. 
Yeah, that's pretty funny. So, what, what, what would supplements would you recommend for uh, for just your typical We're jiu-jitsu about OTCs? Athlete? Yeah, over the counter is that yeah, what you're saying? OTCs. Yeah, like what what yeah. S- typical uh, over the counter supplements would you recommend to like your your average jiu-jitsu practitioner, like a protein, maybe a creatine if they're not competing, uh, and it's st- like what would you fish oil for joint pain? Yeah, I think being on a good solid fish oil, you have to be careful about fish oil though. You want to make sure like. There's different things you can look at. Uh, make sure it's like cold pressed. Um, there, I can, can. Can we drop names of websites on sure. this? No, oh, yeah, yeah, by all means, yeah, okay. yeah. I believe the name of the website is Vital Source. I think it's VitalSource.com, and they sell salmon too. Funny enough, but they are uh, they have that special seal of approval that that you know like NFL and all, all the professional athletes have to have NSF. And what that basically means, yeah. What it means is that what they say is in it is actually in it because that's the thing about supplements. When I when people are like, oh, I bought this at home. Is it okay if I use it? And I'm like, where'd you buy it from? They're like, uh, such and such large brand store. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to name any store. Right, right. But, but I'm like, that's the lowest bidder that got into that store and they had to make their product as cheap as possible to be able to be there to make money. So – that's probably you want to make sure you're getting your supplements from, you know, some type of, uh, I'll drop it, you know, like Whole Foods or something like. You want to get it from some place that they have criteria where they're at least looking to put better supplements out there and not the lowest bidder type of thing. And if you can find supplements that have the different certifications on them, that's good too because what they're saying is on the label is actually there because that's something that's crazy about the supplement industry is what's on the label doesn't have to be there, which yeah. when you think about it, it blows your mind. Like, how can they do that? It's because it's dietary, um, it's, right? They consider supplements right. it's, dietary. It's, it's not FDA regulated. Yep. It's not FDA regulated. So um, I would say most people need to be on a fish oil, need to be on a good multivitamin. Um, you know, getting some type of collagen would be really good too. I just started doing that. Yeah. Especially, and I'm, I'm going to say this more so like, a you know, aging athlete type of thing or an athlete that's just been in it for a while. You know, like, like I said, the 10 year old who's now 30 being on collagen is great. Um, I tell a lot of people to get on vitamin D. The thing about vitamin D is it's fat soluble. So if you're going to get on vitamin D, you should check your lab levels because it can accumulate because it's fat soluble. It can stay in your system for longer versus vitamin C. You know, you can just pee it out. Um, vitamin D if we discovered it today, we wouldn't call it vitamin D. We'd call it hormone D. It actually looks like a hormone. It behaves like a hormone. You know, if you get out in the sun enough, you can make it. You know, like like vitamin C doesn't do that. You know what I mean? Um, as opposed to, and it also is synergistic with some of the other hormones where it's like two plus two actually equals six. So when you get your vitamin D, especially being up in Washington, because you guys, you know, uh, Sunlight is not like <laughs> we see the sun and we're like, we're like, yeah, we're like, we're, we're like, holy yeah, shit, we're in hoodies most outside. of the time. There's not much <laughs> yeah. outside, yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, you guys should probably be on vitamin D, but the dose depends on your level. Um, and then there's different scales. So, like, some people are like, oh, I like to see a vitamin D roughly 50 to 70 on the scale from the lab that I use here, but different labs have different scales, so you have to be mindful of that. Um, Trying to think of most of us need to be on some type of thing for adrenal support where you're at with your, your adrenals is what uh, releases cortisol, by the way, guys. Is that the DHEA um, or I can't remember. What uh, it was DHEA called. sits on the other side. The okay. DHEA feeds the sex hormones and it sits on the other side. Uh, but supplying DHEA, because when people are getting robbed from the cortisol, uh, helps kind of support the sex hormones while you're balancing out the, uh, the cortisol on the other side. And then so it's a medication, but uh, progesterone has always been thought of as a hormone for women because it's, it's really big in women and has to do with you know, like regular cycles and all that kind of stuff. But they started doing a lot of research in uh, the NFL with uh, TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, mm. and putting people, guys, on low-dose progesterone, roughly 5 to 20 milligrams, Another one, it's progesterone's on the pathway for cortisol, so it helps cortisol. Number two, your sleep becomes amazing. Uh, and then the, the, 
I would say some of the top symptoms of a low progesterone level is like brain fog, issues falling or staying asleep. And you put a guy like on five milligrams to roughly five to 20 milligrams, but five milligrams of like progesterone. And they're like, my sleep's amazing. And what happens when your sleep's amazing? Your recovery's better, <laughs> right. right? So your recovery's better Then you know what I mean? Then the brain fog goes away. Um, and then all of a sudden your testosterone starts going up too. And we didn't even put you on testosterone type of thing, you know, but you're supporting that other side of, of the pathway. So now it doesn't have to pull from testosterone. So your body can create its own testosterone naturally. And I'm pretty sure that's not an OTC, right? Somebody would need that. That is not. No, yeah. progesterone's not. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I drift a little bit. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I, got, I didn't want people jumping on the phone trying to order it on Amazon. Yeah, They're right. like, I got, I, got, I got it on Amazon. It, it must be legit. Like, ah, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, here's what I will recommend, guys. Like, in general, be very careful ordering online supplementation because they'll know the names of things and they'll throw key names out there. You're not necessarily getting what you think you're getting. You know, so just be very mindful when you are ordering things online. That's why I would tell, like, before you would start something, I would say, listen, you know what? Go and talk to your naturopath because they're going to tell you, like, X, Y, Z. And, and, and a specific thing, going back to, like, the vitamin, vitamin D, I had a patient who came in and their vitamin D level was 30, which the range on my scale is 30 to 100. I, and they're like, I just bought this vitamin D. Is it okay if I use it? I'm like, yeah, I hate throwing out supplements. So he used it for three months, the vitamin D that he bought from, you know, such and such place. Came back in. We rechecked his vitamin D in three months. His vitamin D was 29. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I told him, throw it out. Well, first off, I said, dude, did you even take this? And he's like, <laughs> I, I took it, man. I'm like, listen, dude, look at your labs. If you, Either you didn't take it or your vitamin is complete crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? He goes, I took it. And I'm like, all right, we'll throw it out. So that's why I recommend people like really knowing because you, you could just be wasting your money, you know. So let's see. Vitamin D, fish oils, which you're focusing on like omega-3. You don't need omega-6s. You don't need omega-9. So be very careful when you do get omegas. You don't need extra omega-6 or 9. Um, good multivitamin, uh, some form of adrenal support all of us need. Uh, before. Or you just jump on one though, I would tell you to almost get some labs, even though it's over the counter, you can get it over the counter because different types of adrenal support, depending on where you're at in your life and your stress level, sometimes you take it in the morning, sometimes you take it at night, you know, it just depends. But uh, most of us do need to be on some form of adrenal support. And if you have any doubts, always talk to your natural path, right? Like just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one thing that a lot of people talk about in jujitsu is the mental stimulation of like problem solving, right? Like you're always, you're problem solving on the fly and whatnot. What do you feel has more, you have more difficulty with in problem solving, whether it's your patients or like a role in jujitsu, where, where do you think that you are having the hardest time with? Um, I don't think, well, I mean, obviously there's always the patient where you're kind of like, dang, you're messed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this could be a good one if I get this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that literally like, I'm like, I'm going to have to phone a friend on this one. You, know I mean? <laughs> you always come across those. Not very often, but you do come across those. Um, see, the thing of, uh, about medicine and jujitsu is they're the same, but different at the same time. Uh you know, I, there was a meme that went around that saying, you know, you can be, it takes longer to become a black belt in jujitsu than it does to become a, a, a doctor. And I agree with it and disagree with it. And what I mean by that is if you want to become a black belt in jujitsu and you're going to dedicate, let's see, I did 120 credit hours a year in medical school, plus the study time that's involved in it. You know, roughly, I, I forget, there's something like doctorate level classes. It's like for every one hour, you're supposed to put like four hours of additional study time and all that. If you would devote that kind of time, you know what I mean, to jujitsu, yeah, you could knock it out pretty fast to get to a black belt. But we're talking about, you know, hitting minimal two classes a day, you know, six days a week, grinding, you know, and that's kind of like how medical school is where it's like, 
I, that's why I was on so much coffee. When I was talking about the 96 ounces of coffee, six shots of espresso. I would go to bed at midnight and I would get up like at 4.30 a.m. And I just kept repeating, repeating, repeating. So that's why I was just strung out on caffeine. So, I mean, they're, they're similar in the, the things like if you want to excel, you got to put time in. You, you have to. And that's why, like, if I stopped practicing medicine since November... And then just started today, like you're talking about with jujitsu, I would be like, whoa, you know? <laughs> so, and that's the thing, you know, like jujitsu is like one week's a month, you know what I mean? Like you miss a class, you're like, holy crap. And you're like, you feel off, you know, until you kind of find your flow again. Um, so they're similar, but at the same time, like, you know, different. What I really love about jujitsu is the, the art of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's, that's, you know, and that's why I have my kids in it because in this day and age, uh, we're not, <laughs> we're, you know, it's all about like, oh, we don't want little Johnny to feel upset. Like, no, little Johnny needs to feel upset and see what the <laughs> hell he's going to do about it. Right. Yeah, for sure. You're like, is he going to freak out or is he going to stay calm and figure it out? So <clears throat> they are different. And, 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 and when it comes to jujitsu, it depends on who I'm rolling with. Right. You know what I mean? If I'm rolling with someone with a lower skill level than me. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to try some cool stuff. <laughs> I saw this on YouTube. Let me, <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if it actually really works. <laughs> nope. Nope. All right. <laughs> um, someone the same level where you get to kind of see what your, you know, your game is like. And then someone that's, you know, higher than you where you're like, all right, I just want to see if I could survive. Um, and those are the ones that, you know, I feel like you learn the most from, you know, you know, rolling with an upper level belt that, you know, their skill level is uh, next level because that's where, I mean, you know, if I, if I can escape X, Y, Z from a brown belt, then dude, whenever I go and compete, you know, I, I'm solid, you know? So I, I actually enjoy that rolling with the upper level belts because they, they really expose your weaknesses. Um, and, you know, depending on how nice they are, maybe they'll let you get part of the way there <laughs> and then destroy you. Or maybe they're just setting you up, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're like, yeah, hey, I'm going to let you think of this. Then I'm going to, you know, <laughs> type of thing. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're totally two different animals. But at the same time are to be good at both. You have to, you know, you have to put in the time. That's truth right there. Putting in the time. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people overlook time in we, very similar to you john and i when we were our white belts we were we were freaking we were also overseas in japan for work for three and a half months and it was god four or five times a week solos on sundays by ourselves watching like rory dean on youtube practicing yep. the moves right and the second we got our blue belt john john's already retired from yes, yes. you know what i mean he's yes. like he's like he hit the <laughs> pinnacle he's, he's all good over here but it's like <laughs> If you have a goal, right, and if, whether it's medical school or getting your blue belt or whatever, you got to put the time in. It's not going to just come to you without you putting the work in. And jujitsu really, like you said, to your point, exposes your weaknesses. And if you're not at that point yet, well, I'm sorry, you just got to put more <laughs> work in. Like you, there's no, there's no like way around it. Like where physical, practical application of the technique is exactly what you need to show in order to get there. You know, and I'm in college now too. And uh, if I can make two nights a week, I'm I'm pumped. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. but it's like I'm I'm writing you know papers. They're not they're not. It's not medical school we talked about before, right? But you know, I'm like yeah. I have I have two papers due today. I, well, I finished one luckily, but I have one more paper due, and then I have two papers due next week. And so it's like. Uh, they're not going to get done themselves. Unfortunately, I, I have to set my priorities and whether it's my schoolwork, my family, jujitsu, right? Like it's, it's, it's hard to, to juggle all those. I could only imagine trying to train while you were in medical school. Cause like you just said, like you took up so much freaking time, man. I, I would go to class in my gi pants and people were like looking at me. I'm in medical school. I have my gi pants on and flip flops. I got flip flops and gi pants on. People are like, who is this weirdo? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut out of here. And, and my coach already knew, like I, I apologize. Cause you know, I hate coming to class late. Right. Disrespectful. But he knew I was coming from literally like medical school. So I would come in like, you know, five, 10 minutes late type of thing. He'd be like, yeah, you can come on in. And, uh, 
because he knew, uh, and he just knew that I just wanted to make class. You know what I mean? That's why I was just like, I'm just, just want to be in here. I don't want to go backwards type of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's challenging. And, and like you said, you know, like sometimes, you know, kids sick or, you know, or there's a final tomorrow or there's a paper due or, you know, stuff like that. And you're like, dude, I've only hit jits, you know, two times this week. I want to get in, you know, more and, you know, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, you're in school during, or uh, you went to medical school, you were a nurse, uh, a blue belt in jujitsu, family, all these like big life achievements. What would you say is your, your greatest life achievement that you've, you've accomplished? So bes besides obviously like my wife and family, which I'm extremely proud of, I'm married, I have four kids. Uh, the youngest, they're twin boys, eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little out there. Just, oh, say that in your head. Sorry, bro. <laughs> I was yeah. like, was like, all right, we're going to go ahead and end this one now. <laughs> and like, we're out. Hey, he sold me there more than what he said he was trying to do jujitsu and school. Yeah. Like, twin boys, eight. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have a daughter that's 10 and then I have a 17 year old boy. And the truth of the matter is the 17 year old is probably the hardest one out of all of them. Yeah. Now. We have a 13 teenager. Yeah. <laughs> Teenagers. <laughs> yeah. I'm already dreading once, uh, all three of them are teenagers at the same time, uh. the younger ones. Yeah. I'm like not, but I, I would say, you know, I, my family, I'm very proud of being able to just create opportunity like they're able to go to jujitsu, you know what I mean? Like type of thing, you know, and, and provide stuff like that, that my mom was able to do for me as a kid and just get me involved and stuff. Um, now, one of the things that I am been super psyched about is that I recently opened up my new practice. It was about six months ago, but like our first practice was like, uh, I know you guys aren't familiar with Arizona probably that much, but it was not in a good area. <laughs> our first practice, it was off of Main Street in Mesa. And it was not in a good area um, where to the point where I remember one time a patient, uh, our, our front desk person said, oh, I'm going to call this patient because I think they just pulled up and then slowed down and then kept on going type of thing. Because, you know, we just weren't in a good area. The inside of our office was amazing, but we weren't in a good area. So when we just moved, like I said, like six months ago, and our new office is amazing. It's right off the right off the freeway it's like you walk in and it's kind of like this is really nice and the outside area you know like it's in a good neighborhood too right so i, I i'm super proud about that and then uh just the possibilities with that and you know our practice is just growing and growing and growing so i'm um uh there's another uh couple other physicians that are with us and we're literally looking to hire another physician so i mean yeah I, i'm super psyched about that i like you know, like whenever you talk about certain numbers about like, oh, I want to make X, Y, Z type of thing. And, and then you write it down on a piece of paper and then people look at it and they're like, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? like yeah, that's a good, that's a good dream there. Buddy. <laughs> and then, and, you know what I mean? And then when you start to do it and you're like, holy crap, like we're, we're literally, you know, like doing the things that we talked about and planned out and stuff like that. So that, that I'm pretty psyched about that. That's cool. Especially because you know, graduating from medical school is great, but then you have, you know, your residency and, and whatnot that yep. you have to do. And then you you finally get to open your own practice. I can only imagine like the journey that you went through in your head, like, holy crap, like I'm opening the doors to this like badass facility that is mine. Like, yeah. like I could only imagine, like, you know, it's like uh, when I bought my first house, I was like, holy shit, this is my house. You know what I mean? Like, let alone, like I wasn't a doctor, but it's like, it was such an accomplishment yeah. to see just like the journey of me joining the Navy and then like being a single guy, I met my wife and, uh, and it's just like, you know, you, now we have kids and I'm just like, holy crap, man. It's just, it's so cool to put in, to look back and in retrospect, you're like, man, what a, what a life, you know, uh, one right. day I would love to open up my own business. We're trying to turn this podcast into a business out. That'd be pretty cool one day, but you know, it's like, um, that that's that's badass, man. I'm I, I'm super excited for you. We need to go down to Arizona, John and I. We, we I go to Scottsdale. I go to Scottsdale to vacation. My dad lives in Kingman, so yeah. Well, Scottsdale, go to Scottsdale. It's closer. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing in Kingman, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> so but yeah, you guys come to the area. I mean, um, 
Arizona has also like a ton of amazing jujitsu athletes. Have uh, you done the Globetrotter stuff there in Arizona yet? No, I haven't. You should look that up. They they have a camp coming up right now, actually. Michael Carrier's gym, um, I don't know where his, what city his gym is in, but it's usually hosted there. And it's, you know, the traveling black belts, they travel all around the world and they do uh, seminars yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And, I actually did see that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's coming up in April. And they were just saying that they still have spots open for it. So you should check it out because it's probably just a couple hours, maybe not even a couple hour drive for you. And it's, you know... Uh, like Preet Michelson is uh, is usually there in like a bunch of high level black belts, and they put on a three day seminar of you know multiple classes. And uh, I've been wanting to go because one of our buddies uh, he went there, and I was like, dude, that is so cool. I've never heard of it, so check it out. It's 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 pretty badass. Yeah. Every year they have it in Arizona. I think multiple times a year. So yeah, dude, they're they're you want talking about something else that's super cool, like uh, working with some of the athletes that I get to work with and I can talk about the ones who make posts, but like, uh, um, now I can't remember his last name. Oh, Hedges, Hedges Libre. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he actually did not compete for three or four years. And I met him, his, he coaches my, he was the coach of my coach. Um, and I was introduced to him and my coach was like, you know, told Hedges, he's like, hey, you should go see Dr. Neil Morris because like he's getting really awesome results. And I treated him. I did injection therapy on him and he just competed. Like I said, it's been three or four years since he's completed competed because of injury. And I treated him and he actually competed in the uh, over there in Italy and he won gold. Oh, wow. And yeah, so he, and he gave me a little flash of credit there. But like, you know, working with these like, high end athletes like this that are like known people, you know, and it's kind of like, man, this is cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. like, it's like you're like, ah, can I take a picture with you? It's like, ah, you know, what type of thing. It's like <laughs> so yeah, it's like um that's something that's I I'd say was just really cool is like the 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 doors open with, you know, these people that like you sit there and look at their videos and then they're like, hey, can I get an appointment with you? And you're like you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Is it? You're like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know? So that, that's something that, you know, is, is really, really cool. So that's cool, man. Yeah. That's kind of like with the podcast, we get to talk to some amazing freaking people from around the world. People that I've been like following since yeah, that we, day one. That we paid to watch on our phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. now we're like having conversations, like we still talk to them outside of the podcast and you know catch up with them every once in a while and i'm like dude it's just crazy to think just how how willing people are to help each other in the community and to talk about jujitsu or promote something that helps people in jujitsu and it's it's so it's so inspiring because it really it it lets you know that like you know don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid to go to other people you know what i mean like Everyone wants to help each other for the most part. I mean, we have those yeah. people out there that, that don't want to do it. You know what I mean? But, right. uh, you know, people posting about your business saying, hey, make sure you guys check this guy out or whatever. Like, it's got to be like, I remember the first time someone commented on our stuff or shared one of our things that uh, that we had on the show. And I was like, holy shit. They just, they just, they said something to us. You know what I mean? Like, they responded to me. Like, it was, it was kind of cool. You know, it's like, it's the small things, you know, when you put your yeah. hard work into it and then people start recognizing it, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's inspiring to keep going with it. So, but John, you got Absolutely. anything else? I don't, man. I got a shopping list. That's about all I got. Uh -oh. <laughs> His wife was blowing him hey, up while he was like, If you no. guys want to, if you, if you have any lab work or anything like that, shoot it over to me. I'll go through it. Oh, hell oh, yeah. I, I'll, yeah. I'll help you, you know. Where would be a good place to do that? But if I didn't go to a primary care physician, or is there like a, a website I can order labs from, or something like that? Uh, you know what? There is, uh, there is a place where you can order them. How would you draw your right own blood, now? though? I don't know. There are some labs that will let you go in there and actually uh, pick what you want, like a la carte. I'm not. I don't know if there's any in Washington. I know there's some in California. Because I, I I have I do have some patients because you know we can see patients telemed so I have them uh, draw get their labs drawn and then we go through it over the phone or you know like this um, hmm. 
And, but I can't remember the name at all off the top of my head. I know um, the big one here is uh, Bloodworks. Is, is the yeah, one so that that's probably one of them. They tend to be more local. That's why it's like it's it's hard for me to right. just to tell you like, hey, in Washington, gotcha. you go here, and Oregon, you go here. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like because it, they're almost like state to state, or can even be not 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 even the whole state. So there are ones I would encourage people like if they were going to do something like that to basically get on Google and just start searching to find the ones in the area where they they make it like a la carte. And basically, they have a doctor that's on there that actually orders it because it has to be ordered by a doctor but they have a doctor on staff that you know basically clears it to be ordered type of thing well good to know i definitely hearing you talk about all this stuff definitely makes me want to get my blood work done and see why maybe there's a reason why i'm always tired and i gained weight and it's hard for me to lose it right now and there you always know. is yeah. what, do they, what do they say it's just as soon as you're getting older travis no it's normal. no that's not true that's not true <laughs> that's what they'll tell you though that's what they'll tell yeah. you i've been Back, oh, you're getting older you know. look yeah. i i've been 21 for 10 years all right or 21 <laughs> years <laughs> so, but hey uh neil if you had one piece of advice for a brand new white belt just starting jujitsu what would it be keep going i think that you know don't stop keep going it's a lot of fun. Just, <laughs> yep. Put in the time. Just go as much as you can. I, I would, you know, I, if you could get in at least five days a week, then, you know, you're going to excel really, really fast. You're going to, I think the most frustrating thing there is for a white belt is to go twice a week. And then like, I don't know why I'm not getting better. <laughs> you're going to like, you, you got to, you got to put in the time. It's like a, you know, to compare it to golf, uh, whenever I was young and I wanted to get good at golf, I hired a, 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 a professional coach and he said, you have to swing your club a minimum of a hundred times every day. Holy crap. And I, he said, that's how you get good. So it's just, I, I feel like in jujitsu, if you, you want to get good, you want to, you know, excel, you, you got to go you got to go as much as you can. You want to ask your chess question? He's a very intelligent man. Do you, do you man. play chess? Uh, I have. I can't say that I'm like an avid chess player, but I am familiar with the game. Well, which which color do you prefer, black or white? Black. There you go. Or do you find that you're a defensive player in jiu-jitsu? Um, do you attack more or defend more and then try to attack from the defense? So, <laughs> initially I started out attacking more whenever I was newer. And now I find, like, I played college football. So when I was a white belt, I went for a takedown, <laughs> which was basically just a charge. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and then now I'm, as I'm older and stuff like that, I'm more likely to pull guard or, you know, let them pull guard and pass guard. But yeah. So like I, I I enjoy I enjoy spider I, I like to pull guard get into spider shoot for triangles um, you know so, then it makes sense yeah me too I was yeah. just curious I didn't even know there was a difference between black and white I thought it was like a flip of the coin who goes first you know what I mean and then Josh like no it's because white attacks and I was like oh I did not know that now I learned something new <laughs> so hey but Neil thank you so, or should I say Doctor Neil I'm sorry I've been so, I've been saying uh, you know what I I, I don't have an ego so. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's worse four four letter words that you could call me. You know? <laughs> hey, uh, so Dr. Neil Morris, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This was very insightful. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that probably didn't even think about some of the things you were talking about or even knew about them, especially in the jiu-jitsu community and newer practitioners, because we know we try to focus around the newer practitioners and uh Injuries is definitely one thing that we always talk about. So um, if people want to follow you and fo uh, see your journey through jiu-jitsu or talk to you about something, where, where can they find you at? So I'm on Instagram. It's Dr. D-R Neil Morris, N-E-I-L-M-O-R-R-I-S. I, I share my stuff from Instagram on the Facebook. I don't really get on Facebook my wife gets on Facebook and tells me people are messaging me on Facebook, and I'm like, well, oh, maybe I should get on there. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm primarily on Instagram. Cool. You got a website that people can check out your stuff yeah. at? Yeah. Our website, I would say, is not super awesome, but it is rhg.health. Oh, they did, they did change the name. That's nice. It used to be the long name, right? 
You yeah, know, like the whole. It used words, to be reje- right? well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting story. I know we're closing it out, <laughs> but uh, we had to change our name because the FDA uh, does not allow you to use the word uh, regenerative. We used to be Regenerative Health Group. You can't use the word regenerative, and we our malpractice said that if we didn't change our name, they were going to drop us. Oh my so, gosh! Yeah, so that's why you, we restore health. <laughs> good thing you pay all that money for the insurance, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, exactly. the name <laughs> is, is what could cause an injury, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's like, that's so all funny. Right. All right. Hey, well, Neil, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you guys for watching at home or listening. Uh, follow us everywhere. Elbows tight dot com elbows tight on youtube elbows tight podcast elbows tight podcast everywhere you guys know the deal uh and thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you later remember no oil checks here all right guys thanks (laughs) i just do that for travis